I want to talk to you today about Rabbi Tobias Singer and his non-response to Isaiah chapter 53 and the premises, the propositions, declarations that are written in Isaiah chapter 53, which state the Messiah is going to be a man. He is going to be a man, and he is going to die for the sins of the Jewish people and for the people of the whole world. Now stick with me. I am telling you that Isaiah chapter 53 from the Tanakh, we're going to be using the Jewish scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures. You can find it online, Safaria. Dot org, or you can read the JPS translation. Doesn't matter which one you read. They say the same thing. The Messiah is going to be a man. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 53 because I checked a couple of videos of Rabbi Tavia Singer. One of them was Rabbi Tavia Singer reveals the meaning of the most misused chapter in the Bible. However, he doesn't go through chapter 53 of Isaiah. He goes through a bunch of other chapters uh, in the Bible. And then I looked at Isaiah chapter 53 revealed. Rabbi Tavia Singer analyzes the most debated chapter. Once again, He doesn't go through the 12 verses of Isaiah chapter 53. And why doesn't he go through them? Well, I don't know why he doesn't go through them. But what we're going to see is when we go through these verses, you're going to say it's talking about a man. And this man died for our sins. That's what you're going to say after you read these, this chapter for yourself. So what I have done is I have put the contents of each chapter uh, in front of you right now. So we're going to start with Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 to 3. And you can see them there on the right. And then we're going to answer a few questions regarding... Here, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1, 2, and 3. Stick with me, and you're going to see and learn who the Messiah is. Because Isaiah chapter 53 describes who the Messiah is and what he's going to do. First question, who is the Messiah? Isaiah chapter 53 Verses 1 to 3. Let's read it. Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of God been revealed? Verse 1 is simply an introduction to what it is Isaiah is going to be talking about. He's saying, who can believe what we have heard? And upon whom has the arm of God been revealed? Who can understand what it is I'm going to say? Verse 2. For he has grown by God's favor like a tree crown. Now Isaiah is talking about the Messiah. It's a he. Like a tree trunk out of arid ground, he had no form of beauty that we should look at him. No charm that we should find him pleasing. Okay, he's talking about a person, it looks like. Let's carry on and we will see this person described in greater detail. Verse 3. He was despised, shunned by others. A man of suffering. Now, we're talking about the Hebrew language. We're talking about the Tanakh, the Torah, the Hebrew Scriptures, the Jewish Bible. 
And what does Isaiah say? He says, this person that I'm talking about is a man. He was despised, shunned by others, a man of suffering, familiar with disease. I haven't heard Rabbi Taviah Singer talk about this verse, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3, where it clearly says, a man, it doesn't say a nation, a lot of people say, oh, you know, this Messiah is going to be the nation of Israel. Really? A nation of Israel? Isaiah says it's a man of suffering, familiar with disease. As one who hid his face from us, he was despised. We held him of no account. And yes, truly, Jesus was despised in his time period. Despised to the point where they nailed him to a cross and killed him. And Isaiah prophesied that this man that I'm talking about right now is going to be despised. Let's carry on. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Verse 4. Yet it was our sicknesses he was bearing, our suffering that he endured. We accounted him plagued, smitten and afflicted by God. Second question. What did he do for us? This man that Isaiah is talking about, why should we care about him? What did he do for me? What did he do for you? What did he do for us? Isaiah tells us in verse 4, for our sicknesses, he bore or carried our sicknesses. He suffered for us. Verse 5, he was wounded because of our sins. So he's doing something for me. He's doing something for you. He's doing something about our sin. Crushed because of our iniquities. He bore the chastisement that made us whole. He's done something for us. He made us whole because there was something wrong with us. We have sin. And he took our sin. He bore our iniquities. We all went astray like sheep, each of us going our own way, and God visited upon him the guilt of us all. So verse 4, he bore and carried our sicknesses. Verse 5, he was wounded for our sins. In other words, as we shall see in verse 8, he died for us. And verse 6, he took all the guilt of our sins. It says so right here in Isaiah chapter 53. Let's look at this third question. He died for us. Well, that's not really a question. I should make it a question. Did he die for us? Third question, let's read Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 and 8. If you've never heard these verses, hey, check it out for yourself. Go to Safari. Check out JPS 1917, the Jewish Publication Society Bible, the one they use in the synagogues. That's the one I'm reading to you right now. If you've never heard these verses, you should ask yourself, why haven't I heard these verses? Why didn't someone tell me the fine print? Why didn't someone tell me what was in the contract? Who has been hiding this from me? Verse 7, he was maltreated. We're still talking about the suffering servant. We're still talking about the Messiah. He was mistreated, yet he was submissive. This man, he did not open his mouth like a sheep being led to the slaughter, like a ewe dumb before those who shear her, he did not open his mouth. He said, okay, take my life, kill me, go right ahead. Verse 8, by oppressive judgment, he was taken away. 
Who could describe, who could describe his abode? He was cut off from the land of the living through the sin of my people who deserved the punishment. Hang on a sec. Did you hear that? Did you read that? For the sin of my people, he was cut off from the land of the living. He died for the sins of my people. Isn't that what Christians have been telling you? When they read the Bible, they say, Jesus died for my sins. It says right here, there's a man coming, Isaiah said. A man is coming and he is going to carry your sicknesses and he is going to carry your sins to the cross and he is going to die for you. Okay, cross isn't mentioned here. I, I inserted that. But let's agree on this. This person, whoever it is, this man that Isaiah is talking about will be cut off from the land of the living. And why is he going to die? For the sins of my people who deserved the punishment. So what Isaiah is saying is, you sinned and you should die. But there's a Savior coming who is going to die in your place. Oh, I know. Some people make a big deal about saying, oh, no one else can die for your sins. Yeah, who are you to tell God what he can do and what he can't do? Who are you? If Isaiah says this man is coming and he can die for your sins, who who are you to say, no, you can't do that, God? Well, Isaiah says this person is going to die for our sins. Let's look at the fourth question. Do you bury a nation? Some people make a big deal of, oh, the Messiah is a nation, the nation of Israel. Makes no sense. When you read Isaiah 53 for yourself, when you open your eyes and you look at the words on the page and you say it's a man and the man's going to die, then what happens to the man? And his grave was set among the wicked. His grave, he was buried. And with the rich in his death, he died and he was buried. Though he had done no injustice and had spoken no falsehood, this person never sinned. He never lied. He never did anything unjust. Verse 10, But God chose to crush him by disease that if he made himself an offering for guilt, there we have this idea of him being sacrificed for our sins, offering up his own body for us. The Lamb of God, it says elsewhere in the scriptures. He might see offspring and have long life, and that through him God's purpose might prosper. Isaiah is saying, if you put your faith in this Messiah that God is going to send, you're going to have peace. You're going to have forgiveness of sins. The debt of sin will have been paid by the Messiah for you. Fifth question. Who did he die for? We read here in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11, Out of his anguish he shall see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. My righteous servant makes the many righteous. It is their punishment that he bears. He's going to make many people righteous because of his death. This is something that Rabbi Tavaya Singer kind of ignores. He makes it sound as if all you got to do, believe in God, do your best, and you're fine. But Isaiah disagrees. Isaiah is saying, no, there has to be a punishment for the sins that you committed. Either you're going to be paying for them, or someone else can pay them for you. 
Isaiah is saying there's a Messiah who's coming who will pay for your sins. Last verse, verse 12. It's only 12 verses in Isaiah chapter 53. I don't know. Why doesn't Rabbi Singer go through each one of them and explain to us, how do you make a man a nation? How do you bury a nation? Is the nation of Israel guilt-free? No. But this Messiah, it says, never lied. He never sinned. He never did anything unjust. Verse 12. Assuredly, I will give him the many as his portion. Oh, what a beautiful thing. If we believe in the Messiah, we become his. He inherits us. This is the glory that Jesus died for. He knew that when he would be punished for our sins, he would have us to himself and we would belong to him. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil for he exposed himself to death. Listen, a nation can't die, okay? A person dies, an animal dies, an insect dies. And he was numbered among the sinners, meaning he was counted as if he was a sinner, but he wasn't. Whereas he bore the guilt of the many and made intercession for sinners. So Jesus right now is beside the Father, the right hand of the Father in heaven, interceding for you saying to his father, please forgive Gershom, forgive Michael, forgive Sarah, forgive Charles, forgive Susan, forgive Lisa, forgive Abraham, forgive Moses. You need to make up your mind. Please read chapter 53 for yourself. And hear what I'm saying to you, because I just read it to you. And I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth.